Theophobia. You're a loser, Jeremy. And no matter what you do, you'll always live in my shadow. Caleb wasn't fond of his little brother. You could say he treated Jeremy like dirt, but Caleb never treated dirt that bad. Caleb slammed his door shut and tumbled into bed. That night, he dreamt of dark figures chasing him. No matter how fast he ran, more and more figures sprang up until he was consumed by the blackness. Caleb woke up, sweaty and annoyed. On the walk to school the next day, Caleb noticed his backpack shadow seemed darker than his own. Weird, he said. In PE classes, the boys lined up for basketball. Caleb's shadow looked fainter than the others. His friend Tommy explained that shadows vary in density based on the distance from the ground or something. Caleb got bored and quit listening. But by lunch, it was clear that Caleb's milk carton cast a shadow, and he did not. Caleb walked to the track to contemplate. Why did we have shadows anyways? Maybe this was good. Now he could sneak up on people. It was practically a superpower. He struck a hero's pose. Then noticed something black behind his fingernails. He looked closer and saw it spreading, like ink staining fabric. Caleb screamed. He ran to the nearby football team for help, but they ignored him. By now, the darkness was at his elbows. Caleb begged the coach for help, but when he tried to grab him, their bodies passed right through each other. Caleb ran to the hospital down the street. His entire body was black now, a silhouette. He yelled for help, but none of the staff could hear him. Caleb slumped against a wall, hopeless and out of ideas. Then he heard a faint crying and followed it to the nursery. All the babies were sleeping except one hysterical boy. He noticed the boy had no shadow. Caleb suddenly felt very small. He climbed into the crib, flattened himself against the blankets, and the baby grew calm. Maybe it's not so bad living in someone else's shadow, Caleb thought. Then he closed his eyes and went to sleep.